Hey, what's up everybody? It's CrossCurrent playing some more Mount and Blade Warband. Today, I'm just going to go over some brief stuff about the tavern, just to kind of get you a feel for what you should look for and what might be really helpful. I find that the tavern is one of the best places to get units, especially higher level units later in the game, but also early game, you can get companions, you can mid game go and get talk to poets to get some poems so you can talk to women which will help you later on with some stuff in the game you can um, just have a bunch of different stuff happen I think in later games they have even drunk fights drunks will attack you can kill them earn some favor with the tavern keeper uh, also if you talk to the tavern keeper you can get a good relation with the entire city so just can go over this stuff quickly just to let you know what's up so mercenary cav Cal uh, cavalry. So they are the highest tier of mercenaries. So of course they cost a lot of money, 2,632 for six of them. Kind of expensive, but essentially they're armored knights on horsemen. So you can say you can hire them, or you don't want to. I just started not going to hire them. Companions. So they typically will cost 200 to 600 um, dinars to have them join you but there are some that are really bad that you don't need to pay anything for now when getting companions use a wiki if you have like three or four or more most more than likely they're gonna fight with each other so if they fight with each other they're gonna start leaving disbanding causing disputes they have to figure out after every fight, they'll say, oh, Marnet is a wimp because he ran away from the fight. Um, or Roth is a monster. He just talks about murdering all these people for fun. Something like that. So, I mean, typically, though, you want the warriors. Because they can learn anything. They're going to survive the longest. Uh, Clethy is actually a warrior, last I checked. Um, okay, so you talk to her. You want our company, I'll hire you, here's 200 dinars, good. Alright, so now they have a companion, what you want to do is you want to make sure they at least have something to use. So you go to party, you click on their name, talk, and then you can check their skills, and you can deal with their equipment. Um, later on, when you have your own faction, you can have them patrol you, they can follow you, they can fight for you, they can defend a certain spot they can do a lot of different things they can even go tell people of how you're such a good king which gives you something called right to rule which is the single most toughest thing to game to gain in the game so I mean it's something that allows other people to respect you and actually accept you as a king rather than just being a bandit who kills people to assume fame um, yeah all right so skills a gun everything. Oh, I thought I was higher. Whatever. Uh, not bad though. That's higher than me right now. Um, more of a javelin thrower. High in agility, above all others. All right, cool. Uh, and to level up the companions, it'll pop up here just like when a swatting recruit levels up. Will show a plus mark next to it. You just click on Clefty and go to her skills and do that whole biz. So. Equipment. Obviously, she doesn't have that much. She has a dress, boots, a dagger, and knives. I try to give them at least a sword of some sort. The throwing knives actually aren't too bad. Um, then just, I give them most of the time just like a bow and arrows. But uh, yeah, at the very least, sword and shield. If she throws stuff, maybe give her another throwing weapon. Because when you get into castle raids you're gonna want them to have something long range otherwise they're just gonna run to the horde which it's basically like soccer when you're a little kid herd ball everyone just runs at each other and they all fall on the ground nothing really happens you have range you can take out a couple people or at least injure them and then move in and it helps you as a player to actually get into the fight um, so right now I don't really have anything to give her. She has throwing knives. Her dagger is going to do nothing. Whatever. Uh, just kind of like as you loot or as you start equipping 
more stuff, I just suggest taking it off and giving it to the person. So then they're kind of on the same level as you. If you notice though that they're about to get pissed off and leave, I would suggest just uh, talking to them and saying that they need to separate for a while. And then they'll leave and typically I'll have them so they're basically naked and sell everything they own. And then you'll know some layers like, you know, if you really want them as an ally, you can make them your ally and then immediately give them vassalage and then worry about the problems later. All right. But yeah, so that's companions. They'll help you out. They'll level up. They're better, in my opinion, than having any other units. Because, uh, oh, right. They can also uh, give you skill upgrades. So like spotting, pathfinding, tracking. Clefie has a higher has higher skills than me in those sections. So since pathfinding is a party skill, hers being two and mine being one, she will get the overall skill. Meaning it'll be plus two for everything, even if I have plus one or less. Now, later down the road, if I were to have two pathfinding and she has four, I get plus four but an additional plus one because it gives half to the second highest skill in your party. I mean that won't what doesn't get affected are personal skills or leader skills but yeah. Alright. I think that's the main gist on companions. Um, you can ransom them. I've never needed to. I might do that later if I have Marnid since he's useless. Alright so um I think the only ones that are free are Marnid and Emira. There might be Bunduk. I think he's pretty bad. Yeah, just mostly the women are free except for Clethy. Oh, Mathild is actually pretty good. Yeah, she's also a warrior. All right, so back to the tavern. Those were companions. We talked about the recruiting, uh, the tavern keeper. So. Typically, you won't go to the Tavern Keeper for much early on in the game. Later on, you can uh, buy wine for everyone, and it would cost 1000 Now, I mean, you'll then come back to the city, and you'll see it's increased by one. You can do this, I think, any number of times you want. So, like, if you're there, you can do it five times in a row, and you'll have five uh, relationship, relation, not relationship, relation with the, the city. And you can also ask for jobs. Uh, that's a great way to get some quests. Count Delanard has been worried about bandits. Okay. That's one of the tougher quests. Hideouts, um, because they're really tough to find. If you find a hideout, try to just remember it in your head, but sometimes it can move if you've seen them, especially if you've walked up to them and then just dipped out. They'll disappear. Okay, so Mount War just wants random people. That's probably to deliver... Um, if they just want random stuff, it's normally to deliver messages. Messages are an easy way to get quests done, but you don't get a lot of money from it, and it tends to be a lot of walking around. I'll go over that in a later video, probably with the cheat, so it doesn't take 10 minutes of wandering aimlessly. Um, Guildmaster and Suno... Okay, so guild masters. To find the guild master, you have to walk around the streets, and typically they're near the castle. So if you go into the castle, and uh, or the chamber of the king, whatever the heck they call it, just leave out the back door and look for the guild master. He typically has some simple quests for you, so like bandits or something that just keeps you leveling up a little bit. And you know you can earn some gold, you earn experience, you maybe find some other stuff to do it's a good way to start off later on of course I mean if the guild master tells you to hunt some bandits and you're level 100 or something you have a huge army it's kinda pointless attacking travelers yeah okay. so there's a lot of work in the area typical in Swadia um, yeah. there are some quests though that like if you're really not looking to join a faction and you just want to make your own, that you should actually start and not ever finish. Like there's one quest. It talks about taxes. You can take them from people. Um, and then you give a portion of it back to the king and it's like, oh, is it fair if I keep this amount? Well, 
if you want to be a jerk and you just want to get a lot more armor, better weaponry, better followers, anything, you just get all the taxes from them and then you never talk to them again. And then boom, you have like 10 to 20 grand. Buy all the stuff you need. Don't have to worry about that for a while. Guy gets pissed later on. Okay, we'll fight him in battle and kill him. Kill two stones with one bird, right? Alright, so thanks for watching guys. That's it for this video. There are definitely some other units you can find in the tavern. But I'll either add them to this video and make a collage. Or I'll just make a shorter video with that sort of thing. Thank you for watching and please like and share if you enjoyed this video. Thanks and I'll see you guys later.